Hey, tubers of the U. Um, this is a diagram of an opposing bucking coil generator slash transformer. It is an asymmetrical transformer. Uh, now, in the previous video, I had explained that you on a regular transformer that has symmetrical operation, uh, you do indeed have two magnetic fields on the output from the secondary uh, with for just one input into the primary. And I explain how uh, if you can separate those two and you can basically get double the output without affecting the input because of uh, canceling fields not happening. So anyways, here's the circuit that I have built here. Uh, I went through many, many, many different variations of this and let me tell you, it is very tedious work winding coils and and rewinding and, and but I finally came to this circuit right here and it works it works for me and if it works for me it'll probably work for you so I'm open sourcing this freely and I, I want you guys to replicate this and if you have an oscilloscope uh, that would be all the better now a youtuber with the user that goes by the username uh, George no Tom George uh, pointed out that my meters were true RMS meters and so those are uh, a little bit on the higher end and they will read uh, a variety of waveforms and so they're fairly accurate um, and I do put a little bit of confidence into them now most of the time I do not like AC circuits because of the fact that the meters will read probably slightly less more accurately than a DC circuit and so this is why I am always showing DC current circuits uh, so this is an AC circuit right here I have a transformer right here uh, plugged into the wall it's a step down transformer to about 14 volts here and so it has a sine wave and I've measured with those same meters the frequency through different points throughout the circuit and it is indeed 60 Hertz all the way through so the frequency is the same all the way through this um, and it's a sine wave now the only thing is is there might be a slight offset or a phase angle because of the different uh, number of windings on each coil uh, so these coils are oppositely wound from each other okay but the current running through them is going from left to right in each one of them okay but because they're oppositely wound from each other uh, they're going to create and uh, the magnetic fields are going to be opposite to each other but they do not fully cancel out uh, because I've labeled all these with the, the va values um, that I have measured on actual meters, uh, LCR meter and uh, the other meters. Um, so as you can see here, uh, L1 has 4.6 ohms of resistance right here and L2 has 2.5 ohms of resistance and so it's a total resistance of 7.1 ohms of resistance okay um, L1 then has 395 millihenries L2 has 121 millihenries now the strange thing about that is when I put the LCR meter to read the inductance through both of them at the same time I get like 900 millihenries and I don't get that uh, because 395 plus 121 is only like 500 something so that's the only thing that doesn't add up I don't get why but it's just just the way it is so let's look at this uh, from the beginning here well first of all here we got two ammeters these are the meters set on the uh, 
current uh, the range the read current here and here um, and then we have a load that is a light bulb and of course the two coils so uh, and the power supply is 14.38 volts on the step down transformer with a 60 hertz sine wave so let's start from negative okay right here let's, let's just start with uh, it's alternating but alternating current really is just two DC currents happening in opposite directions one after another like this basically okay so let's start let's call this negative and let's start from here so it goes in this way through this meter through the load and then through this meter and then it continues on through this coil and then back to the positive same thing when it alternates just like this now here's the thing when it travels through this meter and through this load it splits right here one current will go through this meter this way and the other current will split and go through this coil and then it continues on and goes through this coil again so it splits right here okay and same thing when it alternates back from positive it will split right here and it will split right here and then they will meet again right here and continue on to the negative uh, I have placed this uh, I ran DC current just a plain regular DC current through this and it shows under unity or under 100% efficiency operation with just a DC current I've tried pulse to DC and it pretty much does the same thing but with the AC things change quite dramatically and we get 182 uh, milliamps on the input with 14.38 volts on the input so that's like two and a half watts something around there on the input and then on the output there's half an amp or uh, 508 milliamps of current uh, with 11.83 volts across our load um, so the thing is the current starts here it goes this way and when it goes through both coils as you can see it's going from left to right here and then from left to right here so the currents are in the same direction okay but the windings are oppositely wound to each other so the magnetic fields are going to cancel a little bit but this one has more windings than this one that's the thing and you can see that with the higher resistance here than this one and the higher inductance uh, so there's a slight magnetic field being generated inside of here and they then affect each other back and forth uh, I believe they are causing this down here to be half an amp of current now if you look at this long enough you will eventually see that this meter is shunted directly across the coil right here um, it's also essentially in parallel with each other right here okay and so I looked at this and my first thought was oh well the reason this meter is reading half an amp of current is because I'm shorting all the current from the coil and of course there's no voltage across that meter because it's a dead short circuit so those were my initial thoughts and in that uh, the voltage uh, was completely like dropped down pulled down and you're getting the most amount of current right here because it's a short right across the coil but as I looked at it a little bit harder I almost completely trashed this circuit because I didn't know what I was looking at right here but now that I look at it this current is actually running through the light bulb because look you start right here okay from negative goes to the meter and then the light bulb when it splits right here this is going from negative to positive and this is going from negative to positive so they are going in the same direction and then merging with each other at this point right here 
Um, so, you know, negative going towards positive is not going to loop back around to itself back to negative. So the negative isn't going to flow back to negative. And same thing with the positive. The positive is not going to flow back to itself on positive. No, it's going to go want to go straight back to negative here. First through this coil and then next through this meter, which are both going through our load right here. So our load is indeed getting half an amp of current with 11.83 volts across that. And if you find that, uh, you know, let's go ahead and do that efficiency test. And I'm not going to claim over unity here, but this is what it is. You see, what you see is what you get. So let's put this right about here. Let's take our input here of 14.38 and multiply it by our 0.182 and we get about 2.62 watts. Let's uh, commit that to memory. Make sure it gets on our clipboard. Now let's take our output of 11.83 volts times uh, 0.508 amps and we get 6.01 watts okay so let's divide that by our input paste that back in hit the equal sign and you see we're getting uh, about just what I predicted about twice the amount of energy out than what's going in and if we go ahead and multiply that by a hundred percent we have a 200 and about well, roughly rounded up 230 percent efficiency according to our meters and uh, so uh, let's move on and let's take a look at the actual working uh, on the bench circuit and uh, oh and one more thing I did put full wave bridge rectifiers in place of the meters I put in place of the meters these full wave bridge rectifiers and which is getting AC going back and forth through up through both of them and then converting it to DC and running it through the meter uh, just like in the first circuit and over here converting it to DC and running it through uh, the light bulb and meter just like in the first circuit and sure enough we get our low current DC that our meters can read very accurately I, I should say um, we get the same high output over here so the current running through here is is actually real it's happening it's happening right here the AC running through this whole thing it's running through here like this and then it alternates and goes like this it splits here so these currents are real they're actually happening and so let's move on to the actual circuit uh, on the bench on the good old workbench and uh, uh, let's examine that okay here's the uh, the entire circuit and I know it's a, a little bit of a, of a bird's nest or whatever um, I tried to get this uh, as tidy as I possibly could. I mean, geez, look, I mean, I got rid of one wire right there. But um, this is what it is. This is the exact same circuit that was shown in the uh, schematic. Uh, you can download the schematic or uh, click on the link down below and go look at it. Um, so right now. I got two two power sources one's DC and the other is the AC right here from the transformer um, so we're gonna see what running DC does first and as you see it's 178 milliamps of current at 12.18 volts on the input while the output only has 170 milliamps 
at 11.31 volts across our light bulb and so this is obviously under 100% efficiency uh, operation. So I wanted to show you that first and so right now we're going to switch this over to the AC side and then we will see something completely different. So let me let me do that right fast. So we just take it off here and then we can just put it on here like that. There. So there is the light bulb as a load. Okay, and oh, one more thing here. Let me switch this off the AC. We want to switch our all our meters on the AC. There's the AC, AC, and AC. So now we have an AC circuit. And as you can see, we got we are getting 0.182 amps. You can also say that as 182 milliamps, but I think it's much easier to say 0.182 amps at a voltage of about 14.39 volts, 38. Uh, meanwhile, our output is there's the half amp or uh, 0.500 amps with a little bit of a lower voltage at 11.86 volts. So there it is. This is the circuit in the schematic. Uh, the meters. I'm, I'm also going to show down below uh, a picture where I might show it right now. We're at the end of the video uh, of the specs of these meters. They can read uh, several kilohertz of frequency as well as many other different types of waveforms. Uh, something I would like to talk about again, I guess, is that this is uh, in working as asymmetrical operation. Now, anytime you have asymmetry in a device, you're going to see over unity operation. Uh, with opposing uh, electromagnetic fields or, or bucking magnetic fields uh, in this generator slash transformer. So it's an asymmetrical transformer with opposing or bucking magnetic fields. And one of those magnetic fields in the secondary of one of these coils is actually, because we're loading it down here with this load, is a Lenz's law opposing magnetic field but it is in opposition or not in opposition it's it's almost if see if these were actually equal to each other then the magnetic field would perfectly cancel each other out and so I might actually wind and you know I had this wound where they were like perfectly equal but I had not written this circuit down yet I, I had not put it together yet so but this this is working just fine the way it is with one having less windings than the other and you can see uh, the top one has I think it's the top one has the most windings while the bottom one has the less windings just like in the schematic and so because of this uh, there's a slight difference so the one on the bottom is going to have a much bigger magnetic field and that's going to cause an induction into the top one uh, so the load is creating the lenses law opposing field but now the lenses law opposing field is working with the primary magnetic field and not against it so now the input doesn't have to pull as much current because we have pretty much separated our two magnetic fields on the secondary and caused them to work with each other instead of against each other. And we get this result on these meters and you can see right here they are uh, true RMS 
uh, digital multimeters right there. So, they're fairly accurate. And the current running through up there at that half amp is indeed going through our load at 11.85 volts. So, uh, that's pretty much it for right now. Um, if you want me to wind one with exactly equal windings on them, let me know in the comment uh, section down below. Just let me know and I will wind another one. I'll probably wind one anyways, just to see uh, if we get the same thing happening or if it just becomes like, you know, 100% unity and that's it. But this is asymmetry in action, an asymmetrical uh, transformer bucking field generator uh, by Filer Coil. Uh, I did try a tri Filer Coil right over there. Um, and I was actually following a patent, and uh, I don't have it with me right now, but that patent was like literally a lie. <laughs> I, I built that thing in it exactly the way it told me to. And I was wondering as I was building it, what it has a third winding on there with two windings that are the primary and they're connected so as to cancel out magnetic fields completely. Well, if you do that, how is the secondary going to pick up any power with no magnetic field? That's really stupid to me, but uh, I did that in it. <laughs> so continued on and finally came upon this so uh, please like and share as usual uh, if you have any comments please leave those down below uh, please subscribe hit the subscribe button right there uh, if you're new to the channel and uh, thanks for watching and I'll see you on the next video have a good one